Welcome to CQ Blind Hams, your source for everything amateur related, tutorials, radio reviews, and so much more. Come on in and stay a while. Welcome everybody to CQ Blind Hams first amateur radio roundtable. My name is Joel. My call sign is W0CAS and located in East Tennessee. And today on the show, we have uh, our co-host, Russ, KN4MLR. Good morning, Russ. Good morning. Uh, this, uh, I guess you wanted me to take it from here. Uh, yeah, this is Russ, uh, KN4MLR. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, uh, that's about uh, all I know to say at the moment. Um, I, I'm hoping, Joel, that this is going to kind of be a free, free format that uh, I know it, uh, it's being recorded, but uh, uh, with no scripts or anything. So I did a, uh, the subject today is antennas, as Joel said, and um, I certainly have had my fill of antennas that failed and mostly failed, but uh, uh, no, some of them work just fine. So with that, um, uh, we'll turn it over to Angelo. Well, uh, antennas, how far back do you want to go? Let's see. I started out with a uh, B&W trap dipole, which worked fine. It was a little tricky to get up in the trees. The uh, traps were as big as beer cans. And uh, it worked fine. And uh, then I moved on to a uh, putting in a tower with a Cushcraft three element beam, five elements on six meters and 22 elements on two meters. And then I had to move and I put up a, uh, a ZEP uh, dipole basically fed with twin lead uh, 160 meters because we had a lot of property and that worked really super well. And now I'm down here in North Carolina. I had a vertical up for a few years, uh, butternut, which worked really good except the environment down here was so bad that it actually uh, corroded the antenna and the largest quail just fell off one day and it was repairable. So now I'm running an NFED ZEP and it seems to be working when the band behaves itself. Let's see, uh, well, Joel, you just put up an antenna. So what's new in yours? Oh uh, yeah, Angelo, we didn't uh, really formally introduce you and now I'm so sorry. Angelo, into dyn uh, I think you're located over over in North Carolina and the Outer Banks. So, wow, that's, that's what the environment you were referring to, I believe. Uh, yeah, the antenna I just put up was a uh, radio waves, uh, 40 to 10 off center fed dipole and I bought a uh, easy up mast. It's a push up mast. It's uh, 33 feet, mounted it to a uh, six by six. It was uh, holding up my deck about 13 feet we clamped it with uh, muffler clamps and a, uh, an F MFJ tip over uh, mass bracket. And then we run the uh, other end over to a oak tree about, that's about 35 feet in the air. So we're running about level 30, 30 to 35 feet uh, with the 80 to 10 meter off center fed dipole and it works great. Uh, Radio Waves makes some good product. I had before for the last four years, uh, 80 to 10 meter radio waves off center fed and uh, lightning decided it wanted to give me a test and it cut, it, cut about 13 feet off of it and uh, kind of destroyed my 20 and 40 meter. Uh, amazingly, 80 still works. I check into the 75 meter phone net every morning on that antenna. But anyway, that's about, that's about all I have because I've only been a ham for four years and I'm just learning and you guys are on here to help me and the rest of the uh, listeners to learn. So with that said, uh, we're going to pass it over to Bob, our guest, Kate LR, and you're up in Michigan. Bob, tell us a little bit about your uh, ham radio career and the antennas you've uh, dealt with over the years. Have you, uh, can you guys copy my audio? Oh, you're, oh, yeah. you're fine. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm Bob, Kate LR. I'm in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I bet you I've been a ham longer than everybody else uh, in the group here. I've been a ham since uh, 1961. <laughs> wow. So almost, almost 60 years, guys. <laughs> I got my license when I was 13. And um, I've had every, every kind of antenna you could ever think of. Uh, from loading up my bed springs when I was a kid to loading up uh, downspouts on gutters 
to having a no CM dipole when I was in an apartment in college, uh, made out of 26 gauge wire, um, uh, off center fed dipoles, dipoles, uh, verticals hung from trees, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> but I've enjoyed it. And I even had a stepper antenna for a while, but I didn't like the stepper. It worked really well, but I kept blowing chicks, chips in the uh, controller from static electricity. So I, I eventually took that down, but it really worked well. The stepper beam is a, um, it's a, well, you can get a two or three element. You can even get a four element, I believe. And it's a, a, a rod inside of a, um, it's, a, it's a tape inside of a fiberglass tube that, uh, advances and contracts to match the frequency that you're on. So the length of the antenna is always correct. And that really worked well. But um, uh, I think the dipole, I, the, the antenna that I like the best is a dipole, or I'm trying a new one now that I haven't put up yet, called an N-fed half wave. And I want to see how that compares to dipoles. So I don't know who it goes to next. Um, Russ, you want to pick it up? Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I... I I guess I'll go back and give a little bit of a history. I, I was licensed back in the, the mid '80s as KB4FOL, and um, actually I, I started out with a fan dipole for a few years, and then went to a beam. I had a 30-foot beam and, uh, with a a Mosley TA33JR. Did very well. And then we moved and uh, I put a 20 meter dipole up in the attic. That went extremely well. Um, I was surprised at the performance of it. Then, um, well, after adopting my first daughter, or my only daughter, um, the shack got turned into a nursery. And about a year later, I lost my vision and I kind of dropped out of the hobby for about 14 years or so. And so a couple of years ago, I relicensed and put up a, another 20 meter dipole in the attic. And uh, between then and now, uh, we had a, a second floor HVAC installed and there's just um, the duct work is just running all over the place up there. And so it's not doing very well. Uh, I've got an NFED on order, should be in any day and um, see how that works. That'll go outside. That'll be my first outside antenna in about 20 years. And then uh, I just built a, uh, a two meter double bazooka antenna. Just finished it up last night. Anxious to turn uh, to uh, hook it up and see how it works. But uh, that, uh, that is my, uh, I guess my resume as a ham uh, since the mid eighties. And um, well, with that, I, let's, Joel, do you want to take it up next or I don't yeah. know what rotation that, is here. Oh, that's fine. This is kind of a impromptu get together. We just want to test the waters and see if there's any interest in doing this. And I thought antennas is an easy subject. We all like antennas and uh, the thought of them and building of them and, and me being new, uh, you know, I'm just getting my feet wet. You know, the only two HF antennas I've had is the uh, off-center fed dipoles. I do have a vertical uh, tri uh, three band vertical. I think it's made by Comet. It's a two meter, 70 centimeter and a six meter that I, that I used to uh, have connected to the TS2000. And I, well, right now I still have it connected to a uh, uh, TMV71A but all I use is, I guess, just the two meter portion of it now. It's kind of wasted, but it, it's there and it's a very good antenna for, for two meters. Uh, we get uh, repeaters all the way up to Knoxville uh, on that antenna. It's about 33 feet on another one of those uh, easy up push up masks. But uh, Bob, uh, I want to pass it back to you. Uh, you said you, you got the uh, NFED. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about it and where it, who's the manufacturer and uh, what, what uh, frequency it's going to be designed for. Okay. Uh, can you copy me? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Um, Cause there's, I'm not pushing any buttons, so I don't know if I'm connected all the time or just when you let me in. Um, but anyway, oh, you're, live. you're live all the time. Yeah. I'm unless you, all, unless oh, no. you, Bob, unless you physically mute yourself, you're fine. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, 
the unfed antenna is basically a it has a 49 to 1 ballon at one end of it which and it came from a company called my antennas and what that is 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 um it, it'll match a 3000 ohm impedance at the resonant frequency so instead of running what a lot of people do is they run like a, a non-standard uh, or non-resonant uh, and a piece of wire that's usually longer than the lowest frequency they want to run and what happens is if it's non if it's non-resonant it'll be at a lower impedance maybe 400 maybe 500 ohms and you can you can match that with a with a, uh, a ballon um you know and um or a non on that's a four to one or an eight to one on it you can you can match that pretty well but if you want to match a resonant antenna you have to have a very high impedance and so this is supposed to work 80 through 10 meters uh it will not it will not work 60 meters because it doesn't match the you know, harmonic of of what the wire is mm -hmm. so it can't work 60 meters but it works all the other ones and i'm really anxious to see how it works i just got it i, I want to give it a try I'm going to run it as a slight sloper from the top of my tower at the feed end to uh, to a tree at the far end of my yard. So I, I it's 130 feet of wire because it is halfway. I don't want to give it a try. I haven't done it yet, but it should be a low noise antenna. I'm anxious to give it a try. And um, uh, you know, antennas are a lot of fun because you can you can make anything into an antenna. I even tried when I was, a, we just got my license, I even loaded up a wet string soaked in salt water. It worked for about 10 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Go ahead, Russ. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard of that one yet, Bob. <laughs> but, uh, well, coincidentally, um, I have the the little sister version of what you ordered, uh, albeit it's from a different uh, company. I have the uh, 40 through 10 version coming in of the NFED. This is from a company called Ultimax, they're in Ocala, Florida. And it's, it sounds like it's identical. Uh, they do make a, an 80 through 10 version, but I didn't have the, uh, the, the backyard for that. Um, this one's about 63 feet in length. That's and what good. I plan to do is mount it on the top of my, or close to the top of my chimney on the back side of the chimney and then run it straight back into the backyard and uh, uh, to a uh, a pole which will be just top rail about 14 or 15 feet off the ground so um that was the uh <laughs> it, it it took a lot of different uh attempts at different antennas as far as just describing them to uh, my wife, Laura, before this one was accepted. So uh, this one has to work. <laughs> if it doesn't, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll go, I'll go back to tuning up the bed springs, maybe I'll try that. But um, uh, I, I'm too, I'm very anxious to see how this is going to work. And uh, anything is going to be better than the, the half wave, or the, yeah, the half wave dipole that I have in the attic right now, because as I said, the, the duct work is, is, is there's no, no, no matter which way you try to run the legs of the dipole, you run into this metalized tubing that they use for ducts nowadays. And so uh, it's just very frustrating. And uh, then, then trying to talk my son into going up into the attic and making adjustments. So hopefully this will be a put it up and uh, put it up and leave it. I mean, if I have to trim it, it'll be trimmable because I, I want to put a pulley on the end of the antenna to a rope and so that I can lower it myself and make any adjustments I need to make. So, and then I said, as I said earlier, I uh, just built a half wave uh, two meter double bazooka, which is made entirely out of coax. And um, it's a, it, all in all, it's a fairly easy antenna to build. I haven't figured out exactly how I want to mount it. Um, they call for using half inch uh, PVC to just to uh, snake it up inside the uh, the PVC, and I of course <laughs> don't have any of that laying around. So I do have a, a a large dowel rod that I think I'll just strap to it just to try it out and and see how it works. But um, unfortunately, I don't have a VHF SWR meter to 
to tune it. So I'm going to just have to fly blind, so to speak, and hope for the best on that one. But it, this, this one was just a, an experiment just to try and build one. And uh, I'd, so, so far, it, you know, it, uh, it turned out, it, well, at least physically it turned out, it turned out well. I don't know how it's going to work with the radio. It will, uh, hopefully it won't blow out the finals on it. So. Tell, tell us about rate, how you, how you uh, constructed it uh, about the braid and all of that. I don't believe you mentioned that yet. Yeah, no, well, yeah. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to go into that, but uh, sure. Um, basically, as I said, it's all um, coax, and um, I'm just going to use round numbers here uh, to explain the various lengths of it. But a half meter, um, two meter antenna is obviously one meter in length, and this is what it works out to. Now, it's very untraditional from that point on. Uh, and I'm going to convert, I'm going to jump to using centimeters because it just works out better with metrics. But uh, what, what you do in, in, for this particular frequency, I, I uh, calculated for 147, we'll just say 147 megahertz. But you strip back. 60 centimeters of the the jacket which exposes 60 centimeters of braid and the center conductor and then the braid is folded back over the jacket of the coax and so initially you would think well that's 60 centimeters of braid coming back but um, it works out because the diameter of the of the coax of the outer jacket, or actually the circumference, is much larger than the uh, circumference of the uh, dielectric. You don't use up all 60 centimeters. You use up about 47 centimeters of it, and then that's trimmed to 40 centimeters. So if you take 40 centimeters and 60 centimeters, there's your 100 centimeters, which is one meter. So that, that gives you the full length of the, um, of the antenna. Interestingly enough, and I can't, still can't figure out why they determine that where the uh, outer, where the braid starts to fold back, that is referred to as the feed point. Now, where you actually feed it is beyond the, the braid where it's folded back. So really you could use the entire length of your coax, of your feed line running from your transmitter on up to the antenna with no connections. There's not a, per se, you don't need a, a connection for it. It can just be one long piece of coax with this double bazooka <laughs> configuration at the end of it. So, um, the, the the trick there's two tricks to it one is stripping off 60 centimeters of of uh jacket which is uh, without nicking the the braid up too much and then the other one is folding back the the braid which it took several attempts before i figured out the technique of how to how to actually fold it back over itself and the the outer jacket and smooth it all out and so that uh I, I accomplished it, and, I, and I, after I trimmed it to 40 centimeters, then I put a, a piece of uh, heat shrink over it to keep the ends from fraying and keep you from getting stuck up. But, you know, with, with braid, you know how braid can... So what do you have, a uh, metric tape measure? Yes. The formula that I used was for centimeters, ah. and I do have a talking metric tape measure. Well, it goes anyway. It goes... Uh, standard to oh yeah 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 metric to well that's those are the basically the two so you know the reason why they call that that point the feed line is if you picture in your mind a dipole and your your coax going up to the point where the uh, leg split off that's why they're calling it the feed line because it actually from that point electrically it doesn't look like the feed line anymore at that point it looks like a dipole yeah. Well, you know, that, that's right. I mean, because really the double bazooka is a dipole antenna that's made entirely out of 
of coax. And this was just a variant of it. This becomes more of a, ver of a, uh, a vertical version of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this, the, the feeding, I mean, folding back the, the, the uh, braid and everything would be totally impractical for a, let's say a 20 meter version of it. <laughs> so so this range. only really works, works well. The one that, the, <laughs> the, the, the approach that I took, uh, this particular design works, you know, reasonably well for uh, two meters and up. But uh, after that, the, uh, it, it would be a pretty tough antenna to try to, uh, you know, to try to put up or whatever. So um, my next step is, I'm like, as I said, I'm just going to strap it to a, to a dowel rod just to keep it all straight and connect it to see just uh, how it works. If it does, then I'll go out and get a piece of, uh, of um, uh, PVC and snake it up in there and seal it up. And Do you and have a uh, digital talking multimeter? Yes. So you should be able to measure the impedance of that thing right at the coax connector going to the radio. Okay. To see how uh, close to 50 ohms it is. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, with imp I, mean, I didn't know that you could measure impedance with a digital voltmeter. I mean, I thought there was just resistance. Uh, you may, clear, you may, may uh, educate me on that one there, Bob. Some That's meters right. will measure reactance, but it's very misleading because the, the reactance depends on the frequency. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, Russ, did you ever try a balanced? Now, it sounds like your, your vertical that you're making is not balanced. In other words, you have more center conductor than you do braid. Um, I made one once where the braid was as long as the center conductor, but of course you folded it back over I made it so that the braid was 19 inches and the center conductor was 19 inches, and that really worked well. Well, uh, you're probably asking a question that's a little above my pay grade. Pay grade, uh, uh, honestly, um, I, I I can't. Well, that's kind of what you did, didn't you? Know the air exposed feed line is the same length as your braid, isn't it? Well, initially, yeah, I mean, initially it was, uh, but the only reason. Yeah, actually, you have to actually make the make it longer and then cut the center conductor yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, that's what you would have to do because, again, when you the process of folding it back, you use up a lot of the braid length just on the additional diameter of the uh, feed line. So well, it sounds like it's mimicking an off-center dipole. Could very well be. Um, they you worked, tried though. it yet at all, Russ? I'm sorry. Have you tried it? No, I, I just finished it up last night, and um, um, I've, I've got it rolled up down in the basement. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna attach it to a dowel rod to to straighten it all out. Because you can, these things were designed. I mean, with some of the articles read, you know, you can roll them up and put them in a backpack, and then uh, tie an end to the to the end of the the uh, conductor. Uh, tie a string to it and throw it over a tree or something like that, a tree limb to stretch it out that way. So it's, um, uh, but you know, it's right now it's, it's, it's very flexible. It's a, it's, it's just all rolled up. But uh, uh, later today, I'd, I'd like to give it a shot and see, uh, see how it works. So you could even type the end of it to a, to a, to a window and let it just hang down. I've heard people doing that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Some people have taken the the O connector or the circle connector, the crimp on type connectors, and they'll crimp it on to the end of the antenna. Not not so that it makes it longer, but so the the length of the antenna stays the same. Trim off the excess and use that ring to attach to just about anything to you know pull it up and hang it somewhere, but. Uh, um, I don't have any trees around, so I don't, <laughs> no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, like I said, uh, as, yeah, and if you hang it from your drapery rod, your wife would probably give you a big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, Russ and hang I it, come up with it right term. in the middle of a window. That's, that's the best place to put it, Russ, yeah. right in the middle of the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, that that was, <laughs> he's got to remember that spousal appeal. Yeah, yeah. That, the, the the WHOA is yeah. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. the so. Loft House Owners Association. That's that's what we come up with. 
Yeah, I'm trying to get a I'm trying to get a, a flagpole antenna approved by the WHOA here because uh, uh, TNO7 dot uh, com makes a uh, flagpole antenna, and it's it comes with a flag. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> it comes with a flag, and uh, I thought, oh, wow, wow, that would be kind of cool. Put it, it in a flagpole. There you go. Yep, flower bed and uh, everything. I said, told my wife, I said, you can put a flower bed out there and we put the flag up and put a light on it, shine a little light on it at night, and, and I'll have me a 80 meter vertical. <laughs> wow, 80 meters, so it's got to be pretty long. Uh, yeah, I think, well, <laughs> it's got some kind of matching unit, kind of like, uh, kind of probably like a, uh, uh, what is it, a nine to one ba uh, un -un at the bottom of it. Uh, they said they've got a patented, uh, you guys might want to look at that, tno7.com. And they've they invented another antenna that you can hang from a front from a porch and it's a piece of cloth it's eight foot by eight foot and it's got a uh, 80 meter antenna woven in the fabric with a uh, uh, SO239 to connect a piece of coax to <laughs> and uh, it's really good for HOAs uh, but it's expensive that's about a $500 antenna the wow. flight poles aren't very much they're only like 159 to 229 i think there's three different models of it and uh, no tuner required it said so i'm assuming it's basically an in fed half wave or a quarter wave what's uh, the name of that company again joel it's tn like tennessee 07 dot com tn 07 dot com okay and zero it, seven uh it's a o number o okay tmo tno7 yes yep yep tno7 dot com and they're located over, oh, just past Nashville for me. I've talked to them on the phone. Uh, I was asking about that HOA antenna. They have in feds and uh, different kinds of antennas, but uh, uh, I really want one of those verticals because I like to do a lot of DX and uh, verticals are great for uh, a low rate, low angle of radiation, you know, five to eight degrees off the horizon. You guys are going to hear my cuckoo clock. <laughs> I like the echo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it use a counterpoise there, Joel? Uh, yeah. I think it uses radials, but I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to uh, look it up. It's been a while since I looked it up. You know, I got radials, a feeling these radials. Radials have always seemed to cause people problem. When I was on Long Island, I put up a vertical with radials, and what I did was I. I got one of those edges you walk around with, uh, not the motorized one, but I, what I did is I edged a trench in the ground, laid the wire in and had somebody walk over it behind me to close the trench right up and nobody ever knew the radials were there. Oh, that's great. I've always thought, you know, the hardware cloth, you guys ever heard of hardware cloth? It's oh, basically yes. like chicken wire, but with real small squares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered if you laid about four pieces of that stuff out running in different directions and you attached a wire to it, would that be enough ground plane to uh, to work like radials or do you think since the wires are connected, it wouldn't work very well? I just wonder what you guys think about that. People have used that and it works just fine, although radials will work just as well. I'll tell you what, I was a guy in New Jersey who was living in a condominium with a balcony and he bought a bunch of that cloth and he made himself of all things a helically wound antenna for 160 meters laid this cloth on the balcony and grounded it and it did get out i mean actually what it is is a 160 meter rubber duck with a ground plane <laughs> <laughs> and wow. it actually worked yeah wow that's amazing what you do you know making antennas uh josh over at the uh ham radio crash course uh he got got the sling tenna it's a it's a slinky and uh string it up with some power cord and uh, hooked it up and made some contacts with it he also used christmas lights and run them from the a pole out in his yard back to his shack and as he made as he transmitted the lights would come on <laughs> and it was pretty cool they would come on as he it, you could see it go i mean if you could see it would just light up one and the next one and the next one and the next one and I, I thought that that uh, this man he was gonna try anything. He even got on his roof, uh, but when his wife wasn't at home, because he didn't want to have to get approval. 
and took two lawn chairs, two. Oh yeah, uh, there was that lawn chairs <laughs> and connected them at a dipole at a lawn chair. I mean, this this guy will try anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's a if anybody looking for a good ham radio YouTube channel other than CQ Blind Hams, of course. Uh, Josh over <laughs> Ham Radio Crash Course does. Yeah, a he great does job. a nice job. Well, you know, the, only, the only thing I didn't like about Christmas lights, because I always used to put them on my tower, is they, even though they were LEDs later on, they still would flash and then you hear this click, 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 click in static all the time, you know, because it was close to your antennas up on the top of the tower. That's the only thing I didn't like. Did you put a, did you connect a coax to them and try to transmit with them? No, no, I never did that. <laughs> Oh, Josh did. He did the FT8 on uh, on Christmas lights one night. In you know, show. you 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 get the right situation. You can like you can load up anything. When I was in Levittown one night, about two in the morning, I decided I wanted to try 160 meters out. And of course, I didn't have a 160 meter antenna, and I got this bright idea to load up the telephone line, and <laughs> it worked great. You know, because the lines were out on poles outside houses and down the street, and it got out great, and then it dawned on me later on, man, if somebody had gotten up and picked up their telephone, God knows what would have happened. <laughs> You'd have a party line for sure then, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, man. Or if somebody tried to call you, then you get the voltage coming through the yeah through the phone Well, I was line. using a Johnson Matchbox, boy. Those things are tough. <laughs> Bob, you wow. probably remember the Johnson Matchbox. Oh, I had one. I had a Johnson 200 watt Matchbox. Yeah, I, I think it was called 175 watt Matchbox. Yeah, yeah, I've got one up on the shelf there, but I've got a uh, one of those LDG auto tuners too. I, I like. I'd rather not now. use a tuner though if I can. <clears throat> Better if you don't have to use a tuner actually, because the tuner uses up energy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the tuners, the tuners is sort of a misnomer. Uh, everybody thinks, or not everybody, but a lot of you guys, and I thought this the same way when I first came into the hobby. I'll get a tuner and uh, tune up my antenna. It didn't do anything to your antenna. You know, it just kind of makes your radio happy with what you do have. That's yeah, they really ought to rename it a radio fooler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. If you run open wire feeders, though, or ladder line feeders to your dipole, a tuner really does some fantastic things because it actually can add and subtract feeder length as you tune the, the tuner. Yes. So, you know, you're actually adding the feed line into the system to make the impedance match. And you have very little loss when you use open wire feeders. Right, because it's matched feeders. <laughs> you know, and I also heard uh, people would take a uh, ladder line and cut it and make an antenna out of the, sort of like what Russ was doing with Kovax and you know basically you could take it and just cut it and fold you know take one leg of the and run one way and run one leg the other way and uh, you know that that works as an it can work as an antenna also well there's a lot of companies that sell these j-pole antennas what they are is just yeah. twin lead with a coax yep. connector at one end and okay. cut off different links uh, yes. well now what they do is a certain distance from the bottom of the uh the feet on one side, they cut a notch. And so um, everything above that cut just sits there. Well, it does short out, so, but it works good. And you could do it with a 450 ohm ladder line. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to try that for a Yeah, 20 meter, meter J pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I never tried that one. I made it for six. I've never tried it either. I think I've I've done six and ten meter ones and they work fine. They make the J poles with with uh, copper copper tubing also, don't they? Yeah, and that's where they actually got the idea. And there are guys selling those on the web, you know, because who wants to sweat copper tubing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Anyway, I don't know how long we've been going, guys. Uh, a little over half an hour. A little half an hour, so. Uh, we'll pass it back around. We'll go back to Bob. You uh, you got anything else that uh, any other antenna projects you, you might want to try in the future? Or uh, uh, Well, I was just going to say, if you want to try a new antenna, don't let anything stop you. Try it. 
Try it. Just don't ruin your rig by running a high SWR on the antenna and blowing a final. Let's be careful. <laughs> but try anything. It's worth a shot. I guess the key, Bob, would be to try on low power first. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think with this double bazooka, I'm, first off, I mean, I'll kick it at the low power, but I just want to see if it'll receive reasonably well. Of course, any wire will, you know, will do a reasonable job at reception, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good idea to tow into it rather than <laughs> turning it up all the way and see what happens. But, well, it's a $70 uh, GD77S, uh, at least I won't be uh, out too much. But no, that is a, uh, that is a good idea. You could actually run that one on high, but there's a circuit in there that'll just pull it back anyway. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. I know my Kenwood. Uh, yeah, my a lot of TS modern radios. Yeah, my 440 will cut back uh, very quickly and very hard too. I mean, it it uh, it cuts it back to about a watt or so. Oh yeah, I'm really out of whack. It's, uh, so yeah. Well, you know, you think these HTs are using these rubber ducts? You might as well put a resistor on it. Yeah. Yep. Um, they actually sell those little connectors, the, the SMA connectors, with with a resistor in them for dummy loads. It's really kind of for their own. I've seen them put uh, uh, like they call it rat tail. They connect uh, uh, a little piece of wire to the shield and let it drop out. You know, hang, let it hang down. Oh yeah, on yeah. Two meter antenna. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I, it's kind of like a counterpoise hanging down from a from a yeah, AC. and some guys will probably looks funny though. Yeah, and some guys will put a pigtail a rat tail like that on a screw of the radio itself. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so you could do either way, but but uh, they sell an antenna that has a connector to do that too. I can't think of who it was. Uh, have any of you guys ever bought uh, uh, the little antenna that that folds up? It's kind of it's or you can tie it in a knot. Uh, forget the name of it. Uh, the guy that does hamstudy.org sells them for 20 bucks. You can get them for HTs, uh, SMA, or reverse SMA. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it, I should, but it's a real skinny wire and it's really stiff. And you can just, if you want to take it and put it in, you know, wall it up, put it in your coat pocket or whatever, but it's. It's almost 20 inches long. I don't know why it's a little bit long, but uh, it works really great. I've, I've used it on bow things uh, before, and it's, uh, oh, but I recommend them. And a lot of people have tested those antenna and uh, really get uh, good results over stock, you know, bow thing or Kenwood or, or ocean antennas. But, uh, is that just good on two meters or is it, does it work on 440 it's, also? Yeah, it's a dual band antenna. It, 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 you can yeah you can get them for dual band uh for both of them it's the wire is, is like i said it's it's small but it's stiff and it'll just pop right back in place you tie it up and <laughs> it pops right back in place uh how long will it be you know it's about 20 inches long it's a little bit longer than uh than a quarter wave uh, <clears throat> uh next one next next show and speaking of the shows, uh, we're going to try to do this show about once a month uh, with a new topic. And uh, we find somebody that's got, uh, that's got some expertise in that certain area, then we'll bring them on. I uh, haven't come up with a topic for next show, but... Uh, you know, we need to get KY2D, see if we can get him on one of these, to talk about that hex beam of his. Oh, yeah. Yeah, KY2D. Uh, he's got... I've heard of those. That's 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 a great antenna hex beam. I I really wanted one so bad, but the budget just wasn't calling for a tower and a bunch of concrete and rotators and uh, everything. It yeah, takes what is it? Beam. Um, the guy from Ham Cra uh, Ham Radio Crash Course, he's going to put one on his roof. Yeah, Josh did. He put a. Josh, he yeah. used the rate. He's the radio waves version, I believe. Hex beam, and he put a little piece of tower right up on the ridge of his roof it's like a tripod yeah they have they sell uh tripods to do that i know um roan has one that's pretty nice uh, it mounts right up on the roof yeah and, uh, and they have it in two versions a flat mount or a peak mount oh so yeah that would work yeah if you can get it by the whoa 
<laughs> I think Josh did his before his wife came home. And, uh, <laughs> okay. she, she, she said, looked up and seen, seen a big eight foot antenna on top of her roof. So what in the world is that? <laughs> it's always, it's always easier to apologize than to explain. I'll tell you what though. She's a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She does. She's on the podcast. He's got a podcast, yep. uh, <clears throat> Hammerito Crash Course podcast. And she's his co-host. Yep. Uh, I think she's in the chat room one. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Well, see, Bob oh, yeah. doesn't need that. He's got his tower up there, so. Yeah, I yeah. use my tower. So do you have a beam up too, Bob? Not now, but I will have. And it's funny, uh, Russ and I had the same antenna, the TA-33 Junior, but that thing really got out. It did. That works well. I had one yeah. of those years ago. Yep. Is it, is it light, pretty lightweight? Uh, uh it's only 20 uh, yeah. pounds, I yeah, think. It's yeah, it's not, not very heavy at all. Yeah, it's a, it's a no, three-element beam. And uh, so, yeah, I mean. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, we had a friend down the road who, who had a TH6DX. And uh, I helped him put it up because, you know, I was climbing the towers with the guys. And we get this thing up. We get ready to clamp it down. And he has to lower it because they forgot to put the damper ropes in the elements. <laughs> So I stayed up there. I was not going to climb up again. And they go, and but we got it up. And but boy, that's a heavy antenna. And that I don't think that he did much pounds, worse than my. Yeah, I think uh, they're close to 60, 80 pounds. Oh, but man. but you could stand <clears throat> on literally stand on the boom of that thing once you clamped it down. And uh, I, you know, it's not the smartest thing in the world to do. But if you're mounting antennas <laughs> above it, you don't have a choice. And of course, you wear a climbing belt, but. I don't think that he got out much better than I did with my uh, Mosley. In fact, I worked Korea one night and he couldn't hit it. Oh wow, Mosley, is that is that wasn't your vertical of it? I'm like I said, I'm pretty new in these. Yeah, antennas. no, that, that's a oh, there was a three element beam, and of course now they have it with a forty meter attachment. Yeah, the vertical was a button up, but they are man, they're expensive. They are. And uh, Step Hour makes a vertical. Dave Castor, uh bought one, and I think he said it was about twenty five hundred dollar antenna. And it's got the tape that goes up in the in the fiberglass tube. So that's a stepper it, vertical. Yeah, step or, stepper vertical. Yeah, I think he got it for around two thousand dollars. But I'll tell you that flagpole antenna though really sounds neat. It does. It does. It uh, for like two hundred bucks or less. Uh, there's three versions of it, so it'd be worth checking out. You know, and, and uh, we can't forget about the DX Commander, uh, Cal over in the UK. Oh, he builds those, uh, what, all band verticals, and uh, seems like they're only like 150, 200 bucks, also. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard him, Bob, but he, his, um, the theory behind his, it's like a fan dipole, but a vertical. Uh huh. So he uses these uh, telescoping fiberglass mass to hold it up and well i guess you can mount him in a tree but he's he's got the mass stuff and uh it's a clever idea the guy he's always coming out with new ideas what is a different mass for different frequencies he has them all in parallel yeah i don't know joel you've seen me he's got yeah what he does he has rings different rings that goes around the, the mass oh, gotcha. and he runs then he's got a plate at the bottom <clears throat> And he'll run a, a 20 meter wire up and tie it off with bungee cord, whether he calls it dongy dongy or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's basically a uh, cord that stretches. And then he'll run another one, like a 15 meter one, up on the other side and tie it off. And he's got like a, what does he have, a seven meter mast? What's that, 20, 20 some odd feet? I think he's got an 18 meter mast he sells also. What's that? Can you imagine a mass that's that tall? You, I mean, you have to guy it two or three yeah, times. Yeah, to guy it. There's one that's like 50 feet. You know, the thing that worries me, a 50-foot fiberglass mast. That'll snap. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it, that's a little... Gigaparts has this one now. It's carbon fiber, but, it, you know, it's still... It's still flexible at the top. Yeah, it'd be... I think the, the mass you have, Joel, ain't going nowhere. Well, it had a little lean to it because when I put the, you know, that thing had uh, a ballon and it pulled it over about three or four feet. So we fortunately had a tree about 20 feet behind it 
and we tied some power cord from the top of that mast over to that tree and it's straight as an hour now but it's pretty heavy duty uh it gets it gets down to like an inch and a quarter at the top you know, the top piece is inch and quarter and the bottom piece is i think two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches and 33 feet now roan makes one called a h50 it's 41 feet tall uh and i almost bought it but the thing is when you buy from amazon a 50 footer it has to be shipped by truck freight and the shipping was more than the, the mast was so i got the 33 feet from amazon for free shipping it was 285 dollars, but it was free shipping so you know, if I'd have got the Roan 41 <laughs> foot, it would have cost me $500. Because <laughs> wow. I, I'd get a tower wow. for that. <laughs> you got that right. Man, oh, man. But it, she works pretty good. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, I won something for the first time in my my career. <laughs> in my, Congratulations. I, I won. A, I entered J uh, Jason. Uh, Jason at Ham Radio 2.0 was having a giveaway of four radios and some antennas for his fifth anniversary on YouTube. And uh, I got drawn to win a, uh, a, a bow fang, not a bow fang. Oh, excuse me, J uh, Jason, it's a, uh, it's a radiotity, radiotity. radiotity dual band HT. And uh, it's supposed to be in the mail from China. I'm looking forward to that. It programs uh, via uh, Bluetooth with your cell phone. Uh, and Angelo, uh, you have a mobile radio, I believe you just received, that programs via Bluetooth. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was, I'm getting ready to do a demo later on today. I was actually involved in a uh, concert all week that we did for the Arts Council. Yesterday we did a live stream concert for them for about an hour it was just me and you know my wife did the video for me so so i we got this thing it's the vrn 7500 and uh it's programmed by either your cell phone or your tablet if you have android auto in your car you could use that so basically all you get on the front of the radio is one button to turn it on and to pair it and then everything else works through your uh, android or apple device the uh other th the interesting thing about it is too the microphone does have some controls you can control the volume and the channels and that's it if you're not having the radio in and you programmed it already it will speak the channel numbers but if you have it when you have it connected if you change channels on the microphone you can hear the phone saying oh uh, the frequency and what you've named it as and you know whether your uh, PL's on or not. So it's it's a pretty interesting radio, and I'm still it's got a lot of features, and so I figured I'd do more than one. As I do the basic demo, the first one is uh, I'll do some programming so people can see, you know, exactly the feedback. There are some buttons that I have to find out what they are and label them, uh, but there are very few. I think maybe three or four uh but everything else i mean it doesn't affect you from using the radio uh, you can change power you can uh, it does have uh gprs and a map situation i don't know how useful that's going to be they do do use google maps as the interface so there may be some possibilities but you know how many of us are using gprs <laughs> uh, you know unless you're out in the field doing stuff and somebody's tracking you or you're sending messages via GPRS, but you could use WinLink and do that. I mean, there's certainly other ways to get around that if you want. But uh, yeah, we'll get the demo up there and see. Um, and as I learn new features of the radio, you know, we'll pass them on, do more demos. There is some kind of a networking radio that you can do with this thing. And I haven't quite figured out what it is yet. I just finally found a copy of the manual because they give you a brief, uh, manual it's uh, basically it's one page two-sided and I scan that in and it basically gets you running if you but uh some so it's of a the, dual band analog mobile 50 watt radio yeah right 50 there. on um, two meters and 40 on UHF yeah you, you we were we were talking uh, you were on uh, all-star 
uh, the other day when he first got it connected, and then it sounded really, really good. Did you get the Bluetooth microphone? No, I was using the uh, the plug-in mic, and uh, I did try it the other day with um, yesterday with the um, the push button, the talk button on the phone when I was downstairs, and it, that seems to work fine. What I'm thinking of getting is a a pair of uh, wireless bud Bluetooth earbuds. And uh, so then when I'm in the car, you know, if I use it, if I put it in the car and use it there, then I won't disturb my wife who's usually on the phone or listening to something, you know, yeah. so that, that would be a good deal. I haven't decided Sounds which good. one. I don't have a lot of experience with those earbuds, but apparently. Man, the price is good. It's what, 159 for the radio? Yeah, yep. And I got it from r and you know, All of the places seem to be selling it. You know, Gigaparts had it, but I, they were going to charge a tax, and it was like 20 bucks more in tax. And I also have a history with r and L. I I bought um, my Icon from them years ago, and so I know a few of the people there. But it's, it's a nice radio. It's very well solid radio. The thing is, um, got a heat sink the size of the radio on the bottom, and there is a fan on the back. I must say, the fan is... Um, if fan noise bothers you, it is a little noisy. It doesn't come over the transmissions at all. The mic doesn't pick it up. But when you're sitting in the shack talking, you can hear it going. But uh, all in all, though, it's a really good radio. Jason uh, did an excellent review of it. And um, I think Eric, too, Ham Radio Concepts, did a review of it. He did two reviews of it, and it was pretty nice. Uh, seems, like a, seems like a solid radio. And, and, it, and it looks like that's the way that manufacturers are heading uh bluetooth programming uh and phones uh there's another radio that does that and i can't remember what it is but yeah you know, we'll find out when i get the radiology and see how it is i'm not even sure it has an iphone app uh well you know the thing is you could get a a, a fire tablet for what around 50 bucks oh I, yeah i've got uh i've got an old uh, asus uh, yeah, it wouldn't tablet. take much to run this program. I mean, sounds good. Looking forward to hearing the uh, the the uh, demo of it. We'll put it up on CQ Blind Hams. So uh, anyway, uh, Russ, yeah, I'm gonna pick up. Minutes? I'm gonna pick up my mixer uh, later on, so that you can hear to try to equalize the stuff, so you can hear what's going on with the uh, phone and the audio and the radio. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, Russ, do you have anything else? You uh, you got any antenna projects you think <laughs> about trying in the future, or yeah, uh, not just right for now. I, I think I got my plate full. When as soon as the my uh, NFED comes in, that'll that'll be a project. But uh, looking down the road a little bit, uh, you mentioned radiodity. Uh, I think it's a little early, though. But, but you know, the GD seventy seven has this. Open GD seven seventy seven uh, project, and uh, that is, looks like it is starting to really mature. And they're getting voices, voice feedback is uh, slowly coming on board with it, and that might be a radio to look at because they have re completely rewritten the OS for it. Um, they being a group of programmers in Australia. So they've stripped out all of the commercial functions and enhanced whatever uh, amateur functions uh, that, that they could for this radio. And uh, the speech feedback is one thing that they're working on right now. And they've got a little bit of it working. It's still, like I said, it's still in its infancy. But um, down the road, that, that'd be one, Joel, to Maybe, you know, if it really uh, comes around, then it, uh, it would be interesting to talk about because uh, that's a pretty solid radio, too. And uh, to have a speech feedback on it would be a, that'd be a killer radio. So other yeah. than that, no, I don't have anything. Uh, it's great talking to you guys. <laughs> I think this is uh, – Joel, do when, are you do, uh, when are you doing your interview? Uh, Jason said after after he gets this uh, gets the uh, ham radio YouTubers bunch uh, ham fest done this weekend, he's gonna get with me first next week. 
But uh, yeah, Jay Angelo, uh, my manager here, <laughs> has got me an uh, interview to uh, do with Jason over at Ham Radio 2.0 and uh, talking about the, uh, the community, the blind hams community that we've got going on uh, with uh, you know, all the uh, things, the talk groups and the bridges and uh, you know, everything that we've got to uh, get us all together and the YouTube and, uh, and the podcast. So uh, we're going to be doing that next week. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Russ, you're right about the uh, Open GD77. Roger Clark is uh, the leader of that group uh, over in Australia. And Ian Spencer from the, uh, over at the Active Elements in the group in the UK sent out uh, an email with uh, doing a demo of that uh, Open 77. And you can hear the talk. I don't know if you heard that or not, but I was going to try to get with Ian and let see when he gets done if he'll let me uh, upload that to the podcast. Uh, that'll be a great uh, demo, and it's it's rough, he said, but man, it's going to be good when that when that radio is converted over to uh, speech prompts. Uh, uh, give us another radio other than the seventy seven S to uh, in the in the uh, Kenwood. Uh, TMV 74. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, Bob, you got anything before we go? We're getting no, closer to an hour. Not really, but speech prompts to me don't mean that much because like the GD 77, all it tells you is the channel you're on. Well, I know that. <laughs> well, this will tell the talk group and it'll tell the menus and everything will be spoken just like the, new, the, the open one you mean. Yes. Yeah. The open 77. Yes. Yes. That'd be good. So they're working on it, and they're and they're uh, they're really encouraged. It's encouraging that we're going to have another radio that'll be available. Okay, uh, Angelo, uh, what do you have for us before we go? Well, that's about it, guys. You know, um, we'll definitely do this again, and whenever you're ready, you know, whenever you need it, I'm willing to do it. Like I say, I have a pro account, so time limit isn't a factor, and. Um, you can get a pretty large group. You can put up to a hundred people on it. So I don't think we'll ever get that kind of a round. <laughs> You'd never get a word in. Yeah, that'd be a little hard. You'd be hands up going all over the place by then. And somebody would have to remember who would be next. So that'd be a rough one. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll expand. This is just the uh, initial uh, trial uh, round table. We've been talking about it for a long time. And uh, someday we'd like to do a, a, just an interview show with uh, one one ham and get get uh, all the information and go through his career. Eric Guth uh, would like to you know steal his idea, but basically that's what we'd be doing. He does a, uh, a QSO Today podcast and he interviews everybody. He's interviewed Art Bell and Bob Heil, and uh, he's interviewed a lot of the a lot of the uh, well known uh celebrities and amateur radio and we're going to try to do that with all the celebrity blind hands we have <laughs> that has an interesting story so uh look forward to maybe doing the interview uh qso show type podcast uh, later but anyway i just want to sign off and say seven three to everybody i'd like to thank bob and uh kate lr and russ kn4 mlr and angelo and 2 dyn for joining us today on our our uh, first uh, try at the round table. So 7-3 guys, and uh, have a good day.